Brian with HVAC School, HVACRschool.com and the HVAC School Podcast. And I'm out at my house today. It's the weekend, Saturday, and there's nothing I'd rather be doing than shooting videos for HVAC School. But as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm all geared up. I've got, my, I've got my pug shirt on, my pug shot shirt. I'm even prepped with my steel-toed slippers. One of the things that we see a lot in the trade is we see splices made on low voltage wiring and usually it's made with a ball of electrical tape over a bunch of wire nuts so as an example here let's just say say that this wire here was skinned and we needed to splice it well how would we splice it well typically in the trade they might cut it back if they can make it reach they can't make it reach they might cut it back and then do a ball of, a, of wire nuts and electrical tape and strap it underneath the suction line where nobody can see it is that a big deal? Well, there are some better options of how this can be done, and I'm going to jump right to the best option. Enter the NASA splice. Fire. Or otherwise known as the lineman splice or the Western Union splice. So we got ourselves a thermostat wire, right? And you're looking, you're, you're doing your maintenance or you're doing your service call, and well, let's say, let's say you've got a a system and you get a low voltage source circuit and so you're like ah, oh, everything looks okay but then all of a sudden you come across a little spot and it's like well that's skint right there there's my short so you need to go ahead and get this out of there but how do you do it well like i said the typical way would be to make a big ball of wire nuts and wrap it with some 3m tape if you're lucky but i'm going to show you a better way so first step just cut this out. When you're stripping back thermostat wire, this is just typical 18.8 south wire thermostat wire, and when you're stripping it back, I want you to snip into the end of the wire, pull it back, and then grab the string. This has a nice little string here. I've got no fingernails, but all right. So we're gonna we're gonna pull it back, and we're gonna we're gonna give ourselves a little room to work here because you need a little room to work when you do this type of splice. So now we're gonna cut this casing and then I also cut the ends off where I snipped in because when I snipped in, it's possible that I nick one of these wires. So I'm gonna cut all those ends off. So now I've got nice, nice wire ends to work with. One thing you wanna know is, is that whenever you make a splice, you want to splice every single wire, even the wires that you don't think you're going to use. Because later on, someone may need those conductors, and if you didn't splice them, not good. I'm going to be cutting this in half because I don't need the full length. See if it's over. So now we gotta do is solder it. Alright, so we've got our got our connection here. You can see it's it's not coming apart. I'm really strong, so that's a lot of force. My cameraman's laughing at me. 
So you can see this fits over just nice and snug. So when I heat that up, that will fit. I've already run it over the wire. One of the most common mistakes you can make is forgetting to run this over the wire first. But now we're ready, almost ready, to solder it. Except there's two things I forgot. Eye protect. Glove affixed. Other glove affixed. High power, super inexpensive Weller soldering iron, ready to rage. So heat's being applied to the bottom of the copper. It's gonna take it a little bit to heat up. All right, so now you see it's starting to flow and you wanna get it in all of the, all of the connection points. Now you want to you want to put this in your mouth immediately in order to cool it. Just kidding. Don't do that. Because it will hurt your mouth if you do that. Let's talk about some lengths. You need to have at least about six, probably more like eight inches for this to be a practical splice to make because you have the, the actual splice itself, but then you have to run heat shrink down the wires. And so one of the first things that I want you to do is take, and I've, I've tried out all these different sizes, but I would say take a piece of quarter inch and run it down the wire and then run a piece of three eighths over top of that. And just run it well down the wire so it's out of the way and then do that on both sides. So now I've got that well out of the way in both directions. In order to make this work, and the reason why I did that is so that way this can cover what I need to make up where I strip back the outer sheathing, and then this will actually cover the splice. So it'll be something like that will be how it's how the end configuration is with the splice being under here, and then these two kind of overlapping each other, and then this just sort of covering where I strip back. And then that gives me plenty of room for me to work when I'm stripping back. And then when you strip your wires back, then put the heat shrink on them as well. <laughs> Here's a couple easy things to forget. One of them is to run this down the wire. And the other thing is, is that when you are finally soldering, you want to keep this as far away from where you're soldering as possible. Otherwise, this will start to shrink down from the heat. So I look at about my overlap point to be a, about three-eighths of an inch, something like that. And then we twist them around each other. And once you get your first full twist, then you give it a little snug to kind of, a little tug to pull them together. And then you keep twisting around until your, until your thumbs give out. Mine, I'm actually the thumb wrestling champion of Florida. So my thumbs are extremely strong. You may find that your thumbs don't hold up as well as mine do. It should be understandable, of course. You want to make sure that you don't have any points that are protruding that are going to that are going to poke through the heat shrink when you run it over. 
So that's my first one. You can see it's nice and snug. All right, so that's one down. Now I just gotta do all the rest of them. All right, now before I start heating all the heat shrink, I need to make sure that there's no bare wire. Otherwise, I'm gonna be creating a short instead of preventing one. So I gotta make sure, yep, I don't see any bare wires. Now we're ready to go ahead and heat shrink. This wire would literally break in half before these connections broke. But now we gotta actually um, heat shrink them up so that way they're all together and looking neat. All right, so now we are ready to heat shrink. I'm gonna suggest using half inch instead of three eighths. Three eighths is a little, little too snug. But when it's all said and done, that is a really good splice. I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's a great splice, but it's really a pain to make. Um, and not because any single step is really that hard, but because there's just a lot of things that you have to do in sequence and length makes a really big deal. You know, like when you're making a big ball of wire nuts, it doesn't matter if you get your wire lengths all the same size, but when you're making this splice, you've got to have all, everything's got to line up in order for it to lay flat in order to get the shrink wrap over it. And even in this one, I didn't quite perfectly nail it, um, even just doing it on a table. So is there a practical use so I guess the question on the table is, is there a practical use for this splice? And I would say the answer is definitely yes. If you're left in a situation where you have no choice uh, but make an underground low voltage splice, where rerunning a wire is just totally impractical, then I think this would be the way to go. Um, if it's gonna be exposed underground, exterior, or something of that nature, this is gonna be a really, really good splice. It's gonna be nice and tight. It's not gonna corrode over time. Um, it's gonna do a really good job of preventing future short circuits or other issues. It also can bear a lot of tension on it. The wire is gonna break before the splice breaks. So when, in comparison to wire nuts, I don't care if it takes you, you know, five times as long, this is better. But there are some other decent options. Um, there are the, the little um, button connectors that people in the phone industry use where you put the two wires in and you clip them together and they have a little gel in there. Those are probably okay in, in some cases. They still don't look very nice. And then the other option is you could use button connector, connectors and still 
and still use the uh, still use the heat shrink on it. The issue with butt end connectors is the size of the connection is going to be slightly larger because of because of that, and you need to make sure that you double the wire over when you have really small gauge hard uh, single strand wire like you, like we have an 18 gauge thermostat wire in most cases, and then just make sure that it's a really nice tight snug crimp once you make that crimp connection. So that's that's also an option. Um, probably the best option, like I said, is to either rerun the wire or to use a box. So if you have a an outside application where a wire has been skinned and you can mount a weatherproof box, put some grommets in, make your connections inside that box, that's probably your best bet. But this is also an option. Um, anytime you're in an environment where it's absolutely mission critical that you get a great connection, this is a really good option. A solder connection is better than any, pretty much any mechanical connection that you're going to make, like with a wire nut or with a, um, any type of, you know, they have some with Allen keys that tighten down on the wire for underground splice kits, whatever. Um, this nice, this solder connection is going to be great. Never use the Western Union style splice, splice without soldering it, because over time they'll, they'll work apart and then that's just not a good connection. So so if you're watching this, don't get the idea that I'm ever saying it's okay just to twist wires together, wrap it with electrical tape and be done. That's not even close to what we did here today. This is a, this is mechanically connected by twisting them together, then soldered, then heat shrinked several layers um, to ensure that we're not going to have any issues with this. So hopefully that was helpful to you. I think there'll be some cases that you find that just might make sense to use this connection. I've been Brian with HVAC School, HVACRschool.com, and the HVAC School Podcast. Have a great day.